Hey, what's up guys, Jeremy here. In this video, we will talk about robot configurations. This is a very important topic, and if misunderstood, some pretty normal behavior of the robot may look like real bugs. So if you don't want to waste your time looking around for a bug that does not exist, I think you should pay attention to this one. Let's jump right into it. Once again, we have the same exact station as we were working with since the beginning, uh, with our four corners, our program, and our robot. If I bring the robot, let's say, in front of itself, right here, and I double click the robot, you will see at the bottom of your robot panel, a other configuration option with a more option button and a drop down menu. Before playing with that, we need to kind of define what is a configuration. So a configuration is different set of joint values that would equal or end up bringing the tool to the exact same Cartesian XYZ and rotation position. So for example, you can have the robot in this joint configuration, elbow up and like that, and we reach the 366, 496, and 639. That's fine. If I use the drop-down menu and open it up, you can see that we have from ID 0 to ID 9 of different configurations. So we have 10 configurations to reach the exact same position. For those who don't know what a configuration is, you'll get it in a few seconds. If I just take my scroll wheel to kind of scroll from one configuration to the other, you will see that here, the TCP or tool is at the exact same position, but the robot is not in the exact same joint configuration. This is what we call configuration. So this is a configuration, this is a configuration. Elbow up, elbow down. So by the way, I will oftentimes use uh, those, let's say, human body reference, shoulder, elbow, wrist, so that we have the same uh, vocabulary here. So in this case, we have nine different configuration that we can use to reach the exact same Cartesian position. So it's always 366, uh, 496, and 339, no matter what. If I click on, I'm gonna bring it to, let's say a normal configuration. If I bring, click on more option, this little window will appear. This is kind of a filter. So you can decide if you want to see just the either front or rear. So this is for the elbow or for the, the shoulder or joint one. In this case, we just don't have any rear option. You can know you can switch between either elbow up. So those are all the configuration with elbow up or elbow down. All the configurations with elbow down. You can go for flip or non-flip. So with the KUKA name, either upside down or uh, in the right orientation. So we can either just select uh, a configuration like this or just pick up one by scrolling through the different configurations. If you create a target, I'm gonna create a new target, let's say right here, target five, let's call it just test config, perfect. If you press F3 to see the target panel, you will realize that we have the Cartesian position, but we also have the joint values. So if I bring back the robot to this position here, you can see we have 0, minus 88, 123, 0, minus 35, 0. Same exact same thing as we have here. So that's great. If I bring the robot to the side here, click on test config once, those value match, those value match. But if I bring the robot here, switch to another configuration like this one here, and I press on test config once, the robot will move to that position, but it won't use the right configuration. When we teached the point, it was clearly not in this uh, orientation. This is because in robotics in general, linear motion do not respect configuration and joint motions do respect configuration. What I mean by that is that if you are in a given configuration and you call a move out to another point, RoboDK and the robot controller in general won't look for the joint values. It will only try to reach the Cartesian value in the fastest way as possible. So starting from the configuration it's already in to the Cartesian position. So the starting point configuration is very important. 
On the other hand, if you were to do a joint motion, in this case by double clicking on it, it would match the joint configurations. So that's another thing about single, single and double clicking. Single clicking will try to do a linear motion and won't respect configuration in general. And double clicking will teleport the robot while making sure to apply those joint values to it. Okay. Uh, another thing though, so I'm going to delete this one here. If I go to corner one here and I press F3, you will see that the values you have now here do not match those values. This is because when you move a reference frame, RoboDK do not update the robot configuration automatically. If you just move one target, it will move or update the configuration automatically. But if you move the reference frame, it won't try to update everything because right now it could in theory do it. There's only four targets, but imagine like a very big program where you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of points. Every time you move the reference frame, like one millimeter, they need to do what we call inverse or forward kinematics. So which are quite heavy calculation for all the targets that could be hard on, let's say, slower computer. So if you don't have a huge machine, that could be a bit uh, taxing. So what you need to do is if you want to update the target, the reference frame property. So this one is updated, so that's fine. Uh, but you can right click teach current position that will update the cartridge and uh, the joint uh, position. So if I go F2, oops, in this case here, we don't have the same exact value. But if I click teach current position, the values that are here will be applied to this one here. Excellent. I can do the same here and go for teach current position values from here applied here. F3 teach current position values from here applied here. So that's great. But what is the impact if you have a bad configuration? So let's say I'm moving that a bit more towards the center. I'm going to go teach current position. So I don't need to necessarily open the target panel every single time. I don't need to do that. Honestly, I don't need to update them manually every single time either. Uh, so let's say that I go for target two. Okay. Like that. I'm going to open the, the target panel and I'm going to purposely use a weird configuration. Let's say this one. And I'm teaching this current position here. So if I go here, you can see we have the same exact join values in these text boxes and here. Perfect. So if I double click on target one or corner one and I click once on target two, it will reach target two in the same exact configuration. Why? One click, linear motion, no target configuration follow. Like that. But if I double click target corner two, now it will match the real configuration you can find in the target panel. So that's one thing. If I run the program we already have, no difference because here we are using linear motions. We use the former configuration to move to the second one and then so on and so forth. But if I was to switch all of that to joint motions, as I said, joint motions do respect configurations. So you will find something weird, something like that, like this, like that. So if you have a situation like this one, this is because you're using a joint motion with a target that do not have, uh, does not have its joint uh, values properly set up. So what you can do, small trick here, because it can be a bit hard to kind of go to the right one and then figure out the right configuration. So you can use to your advantage the concept of one click and or two click. So if I double click corner one, I will go to the first position with the right configuration. Then I can click once on corner two. It will move there with a linear motion, therefore not respecting configurations. I can right click, teach current position. It will apply this new configuration to this target. And now if I run rectangle, it will follow a path that makes a lot more sense. Okay, perfect. So that's a very important point. I hope you understood this. If you don't, 
maybe you really watch this video, it's very important. Otherwise, we now finished the first little uh, section of the, the, this training. In the next one, we will attack uh, things that are a bit more complicated. We'll use the what we call the teach target on surface to create uh, targets directly on a 3D surface, which is quite useful. And we'll learn also to, how to create uh, sub programs and main programs in the same way. And we'll learn how to do uh, circular motions so those will be the content of the next few videos. I hope you find those helpful and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.